So the great resignation is here and people are resigning at record rates around the globe and causing tremendous pressure and stress for organizations. But executives and organizational leaders can reverse this trend and actually create a win for themselves. How? Keep on watching. Hi, my name is Safia and welcome to my channel, The Leaders Chat Room. If you are returning, thank you for coming back and staying with us. If you're new, welcome. We discuss all things leadership here and we delve into practical, real life tips and guidance on how to help you to become a formidable leader and to transform teams, businesses and lives. So if you are interested, hit that subscribe button and join us for this ride. So what is the great resignation? It is a term used to describe the phenomena of people resigning their jobs in record numbers because they're refusing to go back to pre-pandemic working arrangements. It is believed that the term was coined by the management professor, Anthony Klutz. Now, in the US alone, it is reported that a whopping 4 million people left their jobs in April 2021 alone. And the thing is, regardless of the country, there are usually high resignation rates when people believe that they can get better and higher paying jobs elsewhere. But we know in the midst of the pandemic, a huge number of people lost their jobs especially in March and April of 2020. When we look at those two months alone, over 22 million people lost their jobs. So the question is, what is causing people to quit their jobs in the midst of so many people losing theirs? The answer is simple. And for many people, it's the very first time in their lives they have ever done this. They chose themselves, plain and simple they chose themselves. People got tired of being the one to compromise in this employer-employee relationship. They got tired of being the one that always had to sacrifice when they saw their employers making no sacrifices at all. People came to the awareness that they were truly valuable. Now, employers say all the time that our people are our most precious resource, but do they take actions to truly say that? As leaders, we talk a good talk, but can we walk that same walk? And people took the power into their own hands and they stood up for what they knew was theirs, acknowledging their value regardless of where they are. So, to the staff, kudos to you. To executives and business leaders, we have some work to do. And so today I want to share with you four areas that you can turn around quickly in your organization to avoid the impact of the great resignation and actually turn it around to be a competitive edge or a win for you. So one, arrest the toxic work culture. And before I delve deeper into this point, I want to encourage you as leaders to pay close attention. Many people do not set out to be a toxic leader, but it ends up happening. And I know that from experience because I too was once a toxic leader. And usually toxic leaders are formed because they followed a toxic leader, especially early in their career. So it is important for you to be close attention to this point because it may just be that you may be the source of the toxicity in your organization. So let's delve in. A toxic work environment is one that reeks of disrespect, suffocation, dysfunction, frustration, and stress. Not just for you as the leader, but also for your team members. In a toxic work environment, everything suffers. Communication, working relationships, and ultimately performance. And if you think for a moment that you are satisfied with the level of performance, I guarantee you that you are leaving chips behind because of this toxicity. But if you need to stop the hemorrhaging of your talent 
and the wastage of your time and resources through recruitment, then you must arrest the toxic work environment in your organization. One of the first things you need to do is to find the source of the toxicity. And almost always, it's a manager or two in the work environment. And then you need to get support for those managers as well as the top leader, the CEO, the MD, or the president. And I will tell you this, many times that support needs to be external. You need someone who will be objective and unbiased in the feedback that they will give you. They need to help you identify, diagnose, and treat the toxicity within the organization. The truth is, these types of issues do not disappear on their own. They don't just go away. In fact, they become worse and worse and worse. So I encourage you, take a look at what's happening in your organization and arrest that toxicity today. You would be surprised how quickly this can turn around. I have seen in organizations with my clients that there is hope these things can get better. You just have to make a choice for it to be better. Number two, the human first approach. And this is actually one of the principles out of my just lead principles in working with leaders. It rests on the understanding that people are humans first and their positions second. When you take time to understand who is a part of your team, remembering that people are really the sum total of all their life experiences, their desires, their ambitions, everything that they would have gone through from birth to now, you have to take that into consideration in leading them. In fact, ignoring that is what led to the great resignation. If it is, we would just take a time out to understand who we lead and incorporate who they are into what they do and what we do for the organization, you would have a far better working relationship and a far better organization. The human first approach doesn't require you to compromise the organizational goals at all. All it requires is a little bit of balance. Number three, dialogue. It's another one of my just lead principles for leaders. When it comes to communication, as leaders, sometimes we fall into the trap of the monologue, where we give information, where we talk, we just distribute to persons, and we never really take the time to understand the feedback that is coming to us. And if we do actually get the feedback, do we truly take it on board? Do we truly assess it and see how we can use it in what we are doing? The thing is, if it is we listen to what our team members are saying and also what they are not saying, we will be very clear on what their needs are and how to align them very closely to the organizational goals. Become an excellent listener as a leader. Learn to take feedback, even the ones that you may not like. Genuinely and honestly take it on board. Give kudos where you need to give kudos. Even if the end result will not be what the team member may want, by how you communicate with them, by the way the outcome looks, they will know that they were heard. Many times if someone doesn't feel like they were heard, most likely they were not. And number four, focus on deliverables. Unfortunately, many of us as managers were bred in an environment where we need to see someone to know if they are working. But the truth is you can only know the level of productivity by what was actually produced. Seeing someone does not equate to productivity. So we need to move away from that paradigm. As leaders, we have to become laser clear on what needs to be done, by who, by when, and how. Only then we'll be able to eliminate all the other unnecessary things. We will not force our preferences on our team simply because it makes us comfortable. We will do what is efficient. We will do those things that get us to the end result in the fastest and best way. We don't have to always do things the way we learned it. We can choose to do something new. We can choose to change 
as leaders, people don't always have to do it our way. We just have to do it the best way. And I will tell you this, a lot of those team members who like to hide behind excuses, when you become laser clear on deliverables, they are exposed immediately. So it works for everyone. Focus on the deliverables. Don't be overly concerned about seeing the person see their results. So as I wrap up, let us just review what we share today. One, arrest that toxic work culture. You are leaving money and all kinds of other valuable things on the table when you don't deal with it. Two, the human first approach. Remember, people are people first and then their position second. Three, dialogue. Ensure as a leader, you're not doing a monologue, but a true dialogue where you take feedback on board. And four, focus on deliverables. That is what counts, not seeing someone by their desk. What they produce is what is important. So take the time, look at your organization, see where you rank on any one of these factors. Get on it quickly, make the changes and arrest the great resignation impact in your organization and turn it around into a win for not only now, but for the future. So, until next time, bye, chat soon. Mm -hmm.